folks, and welcome to my combat channel news. I'm the Ackman Ryan Akavetti, joined by Fabiano Iha. That's it. I'm not feeling like today. You know, I'm not gonna say. How could you be king of the armbar and not feel like being I'm king not, of the I'm, armbar? I'm not gonna say. It. All right then. I, I'm not gonna say. Let's start. Miss, let's start miss, the show over again. I miss arm Ready? today. Ready? Yeah, let's try. All right. What's up, folks? I'm Ron Yakovetti, king of the armbar. I'm Fabian Uija, the ugly guy on the, on, on the scene. <laughs> that would be me. I'm the, the other guy. There we go. All right. Tonight's show, besides being completely ridiculous, we like to get your expectations lowered in the beginning, so if the show sucks, you're not surprised. Um, so coming up on this show, we're going to talk about injuries, influences, and yet more cameos in show business by MMA stars. Mm -hmm. And you get to see how the sport is reaching outside of itself and how influences outside the sport are reaching inside. Yes, we do. And we're starting off with, once again, not as serious. There we go. Almost. 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 At least I think they start to go back a little bit. Yeah. So we talk about... Shane Carwin. Shane Carwin. Injured. He almost hurt himself to the point that he could not fight anymore. So looked like he was not measured and he'd be able to, uh, still gonna be able to fight. Um, Roy Nelson, that's for the Ultimate Fighter finale. That's mm -hmm. in December. So he's got time to heal, but it was a, a wrestling practice injury to his knee, not, again, severely damaging, but enough to raise some concern. And, you know, we, we can't have any more main events and yeah. then cards come tumbling down. It's it's been enough of that. Anyway, I'm that close to crying this year. If you were home and you know, like John has an incredible uh, uh, record. He had a 12 wins and only two losses. And the, yes. la the last two fights is the one he suffered his losses. So and also, if you're at home and you kind of like don't get it, why I forget names is because I got punched too many times on the head. Okay, that's why. And that was all before we started taping tonight. All the punches. All, in the, all to line. Tonight. Yeah, well, the one loss you said that it was uh, Brock Lesnar. He almost took Lesnar out, then he got caught in arm yeah. triangle. And the other loss, I believe, was not too far before that. I, and I'm trying to remember who that was, oh, too. It was uh, Junior Santos. That's right, the Santos. Yeah, so there you go. So two reputable losses. And he hits like a mule. That's oh, yeah. a heavy handed guy. If he oh, gets yeah. his hands on anybody to the chin, could be over. I think his career is too strong. He's gonna come back very strong. Again, that's, in my opinion, is a good fight for him. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, him and Nelson, good. Both guys can trade. He's a stronger wrestler. Uh, Nelson, clearly the better jujitsu guy on the yeah. ground. That could really be an interesting and tactical battle. We move it forward. Yes. We're going to uh, another um, another avenue another once again. Another fighter that is trying to become a movie star. Yeah, or at least reaching out into the TV world. Maybe not the big screen, but a screen nonetheless. Still. Still. And with all the personality and charisma to pull it off. It's my, it's my. We're on the big screen, too. Yeah, we are on the big screen, aren't we? Depends how big is your TV at home. That's, that, that's very true. Yeah. That's very funny. If this is in, if this is in Best Buy right now, we could be on a 72-inch oh screen right There you go. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so of course, we're talking about the ever so colorful Chael Sonnen. Let, let's, 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 let's take a look on his clip. Let's take a look on his clip. FC superstar Shale Sonnen was determined to dominate the role of Dennis. There are parts of Dennis that go so deep inside me that, yes, no one will be able to touch them. Um, there are certain parts that are inside of all of us that shouldn't be touched by other people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you, if you try and get inside somebody else, so, someone else, and, and they don't want it, then, you know, you, sh you shouldn't be... You shouldn't be trying to go inside people that don't want you inside them. What was the question? See? He, he's very comfortable on television. Oh, I, yeah. That could be a recurring role for I, him. I tell you what, I, I have a picture in my mind mm -hmm. of his suicide, career suicide. The only way he could actually end the momentum he has That's going? It. Right there. That's that that it. would do it. That end his career. That would do it. <laughs> He'd not be able to talk anymore. <laughs> That's done. You, you know, know what? I, I tell you what. Because of you know his mouth, he's able to uh, get himself in a uh, you know couple good fights. Yeah, you know what? Though? And the thing about him that I like is that he talks, but he backs it up. He's he's a good fighter. He trains hard. He doesn't come in out of shape after talking all that smack. He really does come mm -hmm. in and bring the best game he can bring. He he's sharp. He's sharp. Tito used to be like that too, very sharp, very sharp on the, the jokes. So you know when you go like back in the in the high school and the school yeah. and stuff like that, and it's always that sharp mouth. Yeah, the guys like very sharp. 
he's one of these guys and he probably you know can also fight you back yeah <laughs> that's the bad part yeah but, that's the bad part you know but he's very sharp i like that i like i like i saw him at the at the at the war the, the mma present, award show yeah i i love when he presented yeah and i think he have a career definitely have a career after his fighting career yeah no doubt he's a great guy i had the opportunity to commentate with him on a pilot up in portland uh, for Matt Lewin's sports fight, and he was he was a lot of fun to work with. Mm -hmm. um, great commentator, knew his stuff, and hopefully one day we get him in here in the studio. And man, that would probably be a, a three-part interview we would show <laughs> across well, more than one show. He's gonna talk the whole show. He's just gonna ne it's be next to him. We just it. hang out like bookends. There we go. All That's right. it. Anyway, folks, we gotta go. We gotta we gotta pay our bills. Yeah, it says right so, here we have to go yeah, for a minute. Yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll we don't be, want to. We'll be right back. Yeah, hopefully. that one. Yeah, maybe maybe. Welcome back, folks. My Combat Channel News. Interesting segment now we're going to approach yep. with the presence of one guy who's here to stay in the UFC and yet another one who might be staying, but Dana says maybe it's time to just have a small presence but yep. not fight anymore. So Matt Hughes is the one that Dana White definitely wants him to retire. And uh, I think uh, Matt still <laughs> think he has something that he can bring it up into the table besides shooting uh, animals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, and, and definitely picking people up and throw down. Um, Matt, he, he think he still have a couple more fights to go and uh, they don't want him to retire. Yeah, I mean, when you're that good and you're that experienced, he can still beat some guys mm -hmm. on their way up. He can still be somewhat of a gatekeeper, but he's not gonna capture the title anymore. He's not mm -hmm. gonna be number one in the division anymore. And at some point he's gotta look at his health and think, Maybe it's time. Look, in my opinion, it's all about the matchmaker. If the matchmaker wants to make you, you know, want to keep you going, okay, I, I can definitely could go back to UFC by tomorrow and probably got a fight, a fair fight, and do well. But also, I could get a very bad fight and, and get destroyed. Yeah. Okay, even an old guy like me. Okay, so it all depends about who the matchmaker put you against who. Right. Okay, and if you are very sellable, if you sell a lot of tickets, of course they want to keep you on. Matt definitely can do, you know, the, the one trick that nobody knows that he's been doing for, that's why he's been fighting that long, because sometimes it's not him, his twin brother. So he goes, yeah, he goes one round, he changed, and his twin, brother, twin brothers come back on the second round. People don't notice that. How many twin brothers are there? It's one, just, just one. one. Yeah, just but two? they look exactly the same. It's a secret that, you know, I promise never say that. Until now. Until now that I don't need to fight for UFC anymore. You're That's watching right. my gossip channel <laughs> news. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on. Uh, he's got a beef going on in the media too, back and forth with Dan Hardy about the hunting and shooting yes. animals. He goes, how could you be a good Christian guy and be killing animals? Uh, I, that's a question for a lot of hunters, I guess. Guy. He's a farm guy, he has right. to kill animals anyway. Right, there you go. Yeah. Anyway. Farm guys do that. Now, Anderson the Spider Silva, arguably the pound for pound top guy in mixed martial arts, has a very interesting set of selections uh, for what he might do with his career next. While he says he'll entertain a fight with Chris Weidman before he does anything, his next move could be, and, and your face when I told you this when we first talked about it, was everything I needed to see in a reaction. He could go to heavyweight <laughs> or he could go to welterweight. <laughs> I can see him going to the heavyweight, okay? That's how he have to do it. So, you know, he's going to some career in Brazil, keep eating, and he can be a heavyweight. <laughs> But like waterway? Well, let's you know what? Or maybe lightweight. Here, right. lightweight. Here's the interesting thing: if he goes to welterweight, the obvious thing it's already been talked about. And we said it was he fights St. Pierre, super fight matchup, yeah. two top guys, right? Mm -hmm. If he goes to heavyweight, who's he fighting? He's not light heavyweight. He's not going Jones. He's going past that heavyweight. He's gonna go Ju Overeem? Junior dos Santos. Dos Santos. Junior dos Santos and Junior dos Santos. They train together. They they on the same team. So be interested. You know, by the way, he's like just trying to avoid of the reality. The reality is he have to face the people that is lined up on the uh, the middleweight division. That's it. Right. Okay. So anyway, we found some pictures of him over the internet. Right. Now this is his his thoughts because sometimes there's a language barrier. These are mm -hmm. his thoughts interpreted by an artist of uh, how he sees a matchup, uh, first of all, with John Jones. This is how he sees a John Jones matchup right here 
uh, if uh, if it were to happen. There you go. <laughs> that is that is what he would be thinking, and that's probably the moment he would say it. And of course, he also sees his place in the history of the sport as being the kingpin and uh, heir apparent to the throne of mixed martial arts. So this is where he sees his place in history with uh, <laughs> with Fedor. I should say that too. Yeah, huh? Huh? I could go ahead and say I saw it. This is my seat. Huh? You should do that. Let's set it up. Get a camera yeah. to go out and cover it. And of I course, need to go to Burger King, get one of the cross. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that for you. I have a six-year-old. I have an excuse to be in there. There you go. All right, and this is how he sees himself just overall right here. And I think this says it all. This is how Anderson sees his, there you go, I right there. I think that's there. how he go into his mind right before he got into the ring. You know what would have been really cool if we would have had the graphics department tilted so it looked like he was actually hanging on the wall? Oh, yeah. They have one like that before, too. Yep. <laughs> That anyway, would have been good. Speaking about hanging on something. That's hanging on here. Ty. Hang on, Ty. we got the top 10 middleweight. Middleweights. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Erin Gales, and this is the top 10 middleweight division. Number 10, Alan Belcher. Number 9, Yushin Okami. Number eight, Luke Rockhold. Number seven, Mark Munoz. Number six, Tim Boach. Number five, Michael the Count Bizping. Number four, Vitor Belfort. Number three, Chris Weedman. Number two, Chael Sonnen. And number one, we have the spider himself, Anderson Silva. I'm Aaron Gales, and that was the top 10 middleweight division. Jack Hummer is in the house. Coming up next in the next segment of our interview by the front stage, we have Jared the Jackhammer Papazian, old friend of mine. You haven't seen excitement inside an octagon until you've seen him fight. Oh, next, yeah. you're going to see him talk because we're not going to provoke him. He's that dangerous. He's Don't and you're going to definitely see him fight more and more. Yep. Just start it. Coming up. Welcome back, folks, to My Combat Channel News. We promise things and we deliver. Here he is in the flesh himself, Jared the Jackhammer from Positive. Jack is in the house. Thank you for having me, guys. Oh, our pleasure. Dude, we have, I have to tell Fabiano, we have history. I've commentated, I think, four different promotions that you fought in, and I think two or three of them happened because you went, hey, I'm fighting again. I went, you're fighting again, you just fought. Yeah, I know, but I'm not hurt. Who are you fighting for? They have commentating? And they, yeah, next thing you know, I'm on the show. So we've done a bunch of stuff together, and I have told you from a while ago, UFC is in your future, and then here you are. Yeah. Good, 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 good job. You did a good job in King of the Cage. You fought four times there. Four you, times. And you won the title. Won King the title. The yep. I fought in the organization as well. I fought there, like, between uh, my fights in the UFC. So that, that's your fight right there. That's the yellow cage. Can never forget that Actually, one. that's... Um, that's respecting the cage, right? That, that's, the, the cage. that's not the, the King of the Cage. Uh, no, that's like, respecting the cage. Uh, yeah. I fought Maurice Diesel. Good wrestler. Great wrestler from the body shot. Yep. Tough opponent. Nice good call ahead. Yeah. He normally fights at 125, but he came up at 135. He's been calling me out, so I decided to take that fight. So, so how did so, it end? Uh, by TKO. 
So that's your weight division, 135? Uh, I used to fight at 135. Now since the U UFC uh, opened 125, I'm going down to 125. You, you, you can do it, 125? Yeah, I did a practice test on August 1st. I did it, and I had a sparring uh, fight the next day to see how I feel, and um, mm -hmm. my next fight will be at 125. How, how tall are you? 5'8", I will be the biggest guy oh my at 125. God. Like, yeah, the tallest guy, yeah. for sure. So the only thing I got to develop is the speed. That's the only thing I got to work on, because those guys are fast. Yeah, they're fast. They're yeah, you have good speed where you fought before. And it's, your different, cardio. it's different, it's different speed. The yeah. speed of Demetrius Johnson, I don't know if you guys watched that last fight with yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Benavides. He looked incredible, yeah, fast. Yeah, very fast, very fast. I mean, I, I, I had Benavides going in there to knock him out, but couldn't even touch him, yeah. so I got to, Few things I got to work on. <laughs> well, your so, pace is always very yeah. feverish too. Are you Armenian? I'm half Armenian, half white. Okay. Because uh, so the whole uh, Caro open up for you guys. Yeah. You know, um, I, think I he, he was the first Armenian guy, I think, in the game. Yeah, he was the first uh, Armenian guy in the UFC, and then it was Manny that yeah, got Manny. into uh, uh, the Ultimate Fighter. Yep. Yeah, like his cousin. Yep. Yeah, I know. You know, I know the both from. Back in the days, yeah, uh, I've talked about like it on a lot of shows too. The Armenian fight community is just very yeah. tight, group, yeah, very we're, supportive, they're very, and a uh, lot of talent. Oh yeah, Caro, Caro, if he was more disciplined on that guy, he could be unstoppable. He could. He just. The, I, I personally think out of all of us, the best one that I think is Karn. Karn Darby. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Karn, I'm yeah. Too. He's very good. He's very I, good. I, I fought him. Uh, my third pro fight, and then after that we squashed what we had, and then the, he invited me to come train with him. Um, he hasn't been doing that well um, in his fights, but he's the best one out of all of us, talent-wise. Yeah, that's, that's a big statement to come from you and and, and, and You're talking about talent-wise? Like, talent-wise, you know, out of all the Armenian guys that, because that Carlos, has. The, the, he's, he always have that open open hole was the, his stand-up on the beginning. Right. He was amazing. No, I'm talking about Karin. Oh, no, no, I'm talking yeah. about Karo in oh, the beginning. Yeah, yeah, in the beginning. He had that, yeah. you know, that open yeah. hole that was his stand-up. Right. So he doesn't have a hole. He's, you know, all the way up. Absolutely. Up and down. Um, Karo, he, he, he's good if he trains how people train now. Before, mm -hmm. you can't be one-dimensional. Today, right. yeah, the course. talent's just gone yeah. off from... You know, you gotta have your stand up, you gotta have your judo, you gotta have your wrestling. You just gotta have it all. You can't be just isolate, just judo. You know? Actually, yeah, and that was that's something I wanted to, to bring up too was that your um, your UFC debut happened, uh, how it happens for a lot of guys too. Not like you had tons of time to gear up and prep for it. Tell us about how you first were introduced into being a UFC signed fighter. Um, what happened was I was kept calling my damn, you know, my manager, Darren Harvey. I told him, get me in the UFC, please. Uh, you know, I know I can compete at that level. And he's just telling me, you know, there's no room to get in right now. In order for me to get in, someone has to get hurt. So there's, a, you know, in December, someone got hurt. I told him, call Sean Shelby. He calls him, they already found a replacement. You know, I, I keep bugging him. I call him every day, you know, keep on it, you know. And uh, Mike Easton, uh, op opponent, got hurt. I uh, told my manager, Darren Harvey, to, to push for it, and he did, and I also pushed on it on Twitter. I got a lot of fans, and I got a lot of people behind me to push for it, and I got to fight to fight Mike East in my UFC debut. And how'd that fight turn out? It was a great fight. Um, fans loved it. Fans loved it. I thought it was fine tonight. Everybody got fight tonight. Pat Berry took my check. Let me get my check. That's nice fine. Uh, Dana White sent me a nice check, but um, it was good. That's pretty cool. That, that, that's that's a good way. That's a good way to get yourself in. Is you know keep yourself ready. That, I, I always yeah. thought about that before. Like if you keep training, yeah. you you keep training, not at a hundred percent, but at least yeah. around eight, 70s, seventies, eighties, and you you know down to, to accept any fight yep. any moment. Right. The the promoters love that because they feel first of all they feel like you save them somehow. Yeah. yeah. It's well, a good at, this, at this level, I, th I feel like, you know, since a lot of guys are just trying to get in, even though if they're not ready, they'll take the fight just to get in. So, good thing I was ready, you know? Yeah, and it's, and it's good too because you, you always have like this non-stop in your face. You're, the pressure you put on other fighters is, is, is not normal. Yeah. It's an exceptional level of pressure and you sustain it with good cardio. So, when I knew you were going up to the UFC, that was the first thing I thought. I said, I hope he's ready. Because yeah. if he shows what he always shows, they're going to like him, win, lose, or draw. Right. They'll see the appeal. And everybody had questions on if I was going to have those UFC jitters, and 
I was going to show him that, you know, I don't have jitters. I don't think you did. So, let's go a little quick about, like, your career, like, here. Like, how long you been training, you know, like, how, okay. what, why you started, like... You... I've uh, started when I was 17 in high school. I uh, got jumped in high school, mm -hmm. and that's um, pretty much how I got in, into, you know, fighting. The UFC wasn't big then. Um, I just wanted to learn how to, you know, pretty much take care of myself and learn how to fight properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, started doing well with it, and I just... Thought I'd, you know, start fighting. See, guys, if you're home and you got jump, yeah, that be maybe a beginning of a career. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It could be a career. And then when you have that fighting career, so. you can come find Jared and he can end your career. Exactly. Because <laughs> that's what he's yeah. in the business of doing right now. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's cool. Yeah. Very. You know, thank you, thank you for coming here. Thank you for having you know, me, guys. Nice to drive here and enjoy. You know. The, a little bit of the show. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're going to have to have you back too because you're going gonna to have a, a heck of a career in the UFC. Yeah, we're going to come back here with the belt. Oh, I'm How getting that, that belt. Demetrius Johnson, I'm coming for that belt, son. It's a promise. Yeah, yeah that is a promise. Home, you got that. Yep. So we want to thank you for coming in. Thank you, guys. Always a pleasure. You're always welcome oh. in that seat. Don't take me on. <laughs> Even in that, yeah, he does that all the time. I don't trust him. That's why you're in between us, to be honest. <laughs> Thanks for watching my Combat Channel News. On behalf of myself, the Yak Man, Fabiano Ija. And the jackhammer, Jared Papazian. We'll see you next time for more My Combat Channel News.